Hello there, my name is Richard McMunn from the psychometric testing website, howtobecome.com, and in this presentation, I will help you to pass an engineering aptitude test. So if you have to undertake any type of engineering aptitude test, please make sure you stay tuned because I will help you to succeed. So what does an engineering aptitude test include? Well, there will be a variety of different test questions, including mechanical comprehension test questions, electrical comprehension or aptitude test questions, the use of tools, cogs and levers, gravity and force, and also mechanical concepts. So let's start looking at some example engineering aptitude test questions and I will then get you to try some live on the screen and that will be a great way to help you improve your scores at the real test. So question number one, if cog B turns clockwise, which way will cog A turn? Is it A clockwise, B anti-clockwise or C it will not move? So cog B is turning clockwise, that's all we know. And just to quickly confirm, I am sure you already know this, but this is very important to understand. Clockwise is the direction the hands on a clock face would normally travel. And counterclockwise or anticlockwise is the alternative direction. So going back to the question, if cog B turns clockwise, which way will cog A turn? And all you have to do is visualize in your mind which way the other cogs are turning. So the second one is going counterclockwise. The third connecting cog again is clockwise. The fourth one is counterclockwise and A is going clockwise. So the answer there would be A. So now it's your turn to try some engineering aptitude test questions. Please put your answers to questions two, three and four in the comments section below the video for marking. So I am going to come on here each day and mark your answers for you. So question two, if cog A turns clockwise, how many cogs will turn anti-clockwise? Is it A1, B2, C3 or D4? Put your answer in the comments section below the video. Now on the right hand side, there is a timer. I am going to give you a short amount of seconds to answer each question and I will then move on. So here is your timer. Okay, well done. Question number three. And these questions, by the way, will get progressively harder as we work through the tutorial. Which of the following tools would be most suitable for removing spark plugs from an engine? A, B or C? And you have the time it takes the timer to put your answer in the comments section below to question three. Here we go. Brilliant. And question four, which of the following screws stroke bolts are least likely to round or strip the head and provide greater torque? A, B, C or D? And again, please put your answer in the comments section below the video to question four. Here's your timer. So you will find that by practicing these questions under strict, difficult time conditions, it will help you during the real test. So let's now try a different type of engineering aptitude test question. Let's make it a little bit harder. Question five. In which direction will the canoe travel if the canoeist loses his left paddle but continues to use the right one only. So that's the direction of travel. The canoeist loses his left paddle and he's only left with the right one. So what is the answer? Well, the answer is B. And that's because when the right paddle is being used, the paddle is pushing against the water on the right hand side of the canoe. And this force pushes the canoe to the left. So the answer is B. So again, now it's your turn to try some more engineering aptitude test questions. Please put your answers to questions six, seven and eight in the comments section below the video for marking. This is a tough one. Question six. If the driver of the following right hand drive car reverses whilst turning the wheel to the left, which direction will the trailer go? Is it A, backwards and to the left or B, backwards and to the right? So the driver 
is in a right-hand drive car, turning the wheel to the left and reversing. Put your answer to question six in the comment section below. Here's your time. Okay, well done. And question seven, which direction is the truck moving? If the truck is stationary, select C for your answer. So is it A, that direction, B, that direction, or C, stationary? Here's a timer. Now, if you do need more time as we go on, please pause the video. It's important that you get them correct. Here's question eight. Why are convex wing mirrors commonly used on vehicles? Is it A, the reflection of images are clearer? B, convex mirrors don't distort moving images? C, vibrations from movement are countered when using a convex mirror? Or D, they provide a wider field of view? And just to give you a tip, convex is having an outline or surface curved like the exterior of a circle or sphere. So put your answer to question eight in the comments section below, A, B, C or D, here's your timer. Okay, let's now try a different type of engineering aptitude test question. Question nine, how much weight should be placed at point X to balance the beam? So this is point X and on the left we have a 90 kilogram weight. Now we have one meter there on the left hand side from the fulcrum point and three meters on the right hand side. That's the fulcrum point, the balance point. So therefore what do we need to put at point X? Well if it's three times the, diff the distance, so on the left it's one meter and on the right it's three meters, it's three times the distance, the weight is therefore a third of the weight on the left. So three divided by 90 equals 30 kilograms, that's the weight that would go there to balance the beam. So now it's your turn to try two more engineering aptitude test questions. Please put your answers to questions 10 and 11 in the comments section below the video for marking. Question 10, how much weight should be placed at point X to balance the beam? Is it A, 15 kilograms, B, 10 kilograms, C, 300 kilograms, or D, 30 kilograms? Here's a timer. Well done. And question 11. Again, how much weight should be placed at point X to balance the beam? Is it A, 10 kilograms, B, 20, C, 70 kilograms, or D, 90 kilograms? This is a difficult one. Don't forget to look at the distances. And again, if you need more time, pause the video. Here's your timer. Okay, you're making really good progress. Let's now try a different type of engineering aptitude test question. Question 12. Both water buckets are filled to the top. Which water bucket most accurately demonstrates how water would leak from the bucket if four small holes were made on the side of the buckets? Now, the water pressure is higher at lower points of the bucket causing water streams to go further. So the pressure's coming down on the top, therefore at the bottom, the water is streaming out further. Therefore, the correct answer is Y. So now it's your turn to try two more engineering aptitude test questions. Please put your answers to questions 13 and 14 in the comments section below the video for marking. Question 13. A truck containing petrol is traveling at 40 miles per hour in the direction of the large arrow, going to the right. If it had to suddenly break, which diagram best demonstrates what would happen to the petrol? So the petrol is the white shaded part there. So what would happen if the truck had to suddenly break? A, B or C? Here's your timer. Okay, in question 14, a slightly different one. The following three trucks are parked on an incline. Their center of gravity is identified by a dot. 
So that's the center of gravity for each one of the trucks A, B, and C. Which of the three HGVs or the three trucks is least likely to fall over? A, B, or C? Put your answer in the comments section below to question 14. Here is the timer. Okay, let's now try a different type of engineering aptitude test question. Question 15. How much force is required to lift the load? So the load you can see at the bottom weighs 420 kilograms. And there are a total of six sections of rope supporting it. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now in order to calculate the force required to lift that load, all you need to do is simply divide the weight, 420 kilograms, by the number of supporting ropes in order to reach your answer. So 420 divided by six equals 70 kilograms. So now it's your turn to try another two engineering aptitude test questions. Please put your answers to questions 16 and 17 in the comments section below the video for marking. Question 16. How much force is required to lift the load? A. 840 kilograms. B. 60 kilograms. C. 70 kilograms. D. 120 kilograms. Or E. None of these. Here is your time. Brilliant. Question 17. Now this is slightly different. I won't give you any clues. See if you can work this one out. How much weight is required to hold the load? Not lift it, hold it. Here's your timer. Brilliant. You're doing fantastic. Let's now try a different type of engineering aptitude test question. Question 18, this is electrical aptitude. These are very common during engineering aptitude test questions. In the following electrical circuit, which switch or which switches will need to be closed to allow bulbs B and C to illuminate? A, switches 1 and 5. B, switches 1, 4 and 5. C, all of the switches. D, switches 1, 2 and 3. E, switch 1. So that symbol is a bulb. That is the power supply or the battery, and that there is the switch. Now, what we need to do to illuminate B and C is form that circuit there. So, all we need to do is close that one switch. So, the answer is E. Very basic. So, now it's your turn again to try two more engineering aptitude test questions. Please do put your answers to questions 19 and 20 in the comments section below the video for marking. Question 19. If bulb 2 is removed, how many bulbs will illuminate? A. One bulb. B. Two bulbs. C. Three bulbs. D. Four bulbs. Or E. None of the above. Here is your timer. Put your answer to question 19 in the comments section below. And don't get caught out. That's a bit of a tricky question, by the way. Question 20. When the switch is closed, how many bulbs will illuminate when bulb 3 is removed and replaced with cable or wire, electrical wire? A, one bulb. B, two bulbs. C, three bulbs. Four, sorry, D, four bulbs. Or E, none of the above. None of the above. Please put your answer to question 20 in the comments section below. Here is your timer. Okay, let's now try a different type of engineering aptitude test question. 21, question 21, at which point will the beam balance? So we have that dark grey coloured beam in the centre there with two weights on either side. We have 20 kilograms and 5. Therefore, we cannot balance it in the middle, so it can't be B. It needs to be to the right of that to balance because the heavier weight is on the right-hand side and the lighter weight on the left. So therefore, the only answer option could be C. Answer C. So now it's your turn to try another two engineering aptitude test questions. Please do put your answers to questions 22 and 23 in the comments section below the video for marking. Question 22. Which rope or ropes are not needed to support the load? So look at the pivot, look at the load on the left-hand side 
Put your answer in the comments section below. Which rope or ropes are not needed to support the load? And question 23, which rope is needed to support the load on the crane? X or Y? Which rope is needed? There's the pivot and there's the weight. Here's the timer. And I'll give you a clue, there's only one of them needed. Okay, let's now try a different type of engineering aptitude test question. This is tough. Question 24, an aircraft carrier is traveling due east at 0.8 meters per second with a current flow of 0.2 meters per second due east. After one hour of traveling, how far has the ship traveled in kilometers? Now, the ship is traveling 0.8 meters per second due east. That's due east, we can see the compass. There is a current sea flow or water flow that is going due east as well of 0.2 meters per second. And this is obviously aiding the travel. Now, therefore, the ship is traveling at a speed of one meter per second. Now, one hour equals 3,600 seconds, because all we need to do to calculate that is 60 seconds in a minute times 60 minutes equals 3,600. Now, one meter per second multiplied by 3,600 seconds equals 3,600 meters or 3.6 kilometers, and that's the answer. So now it's your turn to try two more engineering aptitude test questions. Please put your answers to questions 25 and 26 in the comments section below the video. A ship sails due west. So you can see the arrow, that is due west. It then changes course as shown on the dotted line to go that direction. Which direction is it now traveling in? A, west, B, north, C, south, or D, east? Put your answer in the comment section below the video for question 25. Here's a timer. And question 26. A warship is traveling due northeast at 1.2 meters per second against a current flow of 0.6 meters per second due southwest. After three hours of traveling, how far has the ship traveled? A, 6.48 kilometers northeast of its starting location. B, 1.8 kilometers northeast of its starting location. C, 1.8 kilometers southwest of its starting location. Or D, 64.8 kilometers southwest of its starting location. Now, if you use a little bit of common sense, you will be able to remove two of the answer options straight away. So choose your answer option A, B, C or D. And here's a timer. I've given you a little bit longer because this is a trickier question. OK, well done. Now, I hope you've enjoyed those. If you would like access to more engineering aptitude test questions and psychometric tests free of charge, click that link right now in the top right hand corner of the video. Head through to my website, howtobecome.com, and you can practice loads, hundreds more aptitude, psychometric and engineering test questions that will help you to prepare for your test. I hope you've enjoyed that. Don't forget to put all of your answers in the comments section below the video. Please also subscribe. We have over half a million subscribers now. And lots of you are passing your tests and your interviews as a result of these training resources. And I don't want you to miss out. And finally, please give the video a thumbs up. Please give it a like because that motivates me to create more test questions for you. Thank you very much for watching. And I wish you all the best for passing your engineering or aptitude tests. Thank you very much for watching.